Welcome back to our channel, everyone. Again with you, Omar from Brownsburg Motorsports. And again, we have another BMW over here for some repair, so let's get to it. All right, before we jump into this, I just want to say a few things. This job uh, includes three important or three big steps. The first step is removing the radiator fan. The second step, removing the uh, intercooler on the passenger side. And the third step is removing and installing the new thermostat. Now, for the sake of this video, I do not want to make it too long for you. I have already dropped a video about how to remove and replace the radiator on the same exact uh, model. And uh, if you watch that video, it will show you the first step, which is basically removing the radiator fan. Once you watch, watch that, you can jump straight over here with us. We're going to start straight with the uh, intercooler. And like always, make sure you disconnect your battery with these cars. You can raise it up. And because we're going to walk with electronics, make sure you disconnect it. All right, our customer stated that the car is showing that it's overheating. Basically, he starts it up in the morning when the car is cold and the temperature on the instrument cluster goes all the way up to uh, very hot and uh, the car goes into limp mode. So after scanning the car and going through all the codes, these are the last five that stayed and especially that last one over here, 109-21A, characteristic map, thermostat, sensor, short circuit to be plus. This is the uh, ETC sensor uh, or the ECT sensor that goes on the thermostat. In this car, it is built in and there is a service bulletin actually about for these cars, the G12. If you look up that code, it will see it and uh, it recommends replacing the harness and the thermostat. In our scenario over here, I've already diagnosed the car and went through all the uh, uh, things that needs to be replaced and uh, the harness seems to be in completely, completely perfect shape. Uh, the service bulletin says that in some scenarios the coolant will leak from the sensor onto the harness and it will cause corrosion and that's why they recommend replacing the uh, harness itself. In this scenario the sensor is simply faulty and that's why the moment you start the car the temperature goes all the way up. There is no coolant leaking from the uh, uh, sensor or from the thermostat itself. So let's get to it. All right, now that we have our radiator fan out of the way, uh, we're going to remove our uh, passenger side or right side charge air cooler so we can get to the thermostat. Uh, first thing, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this plug over here. I already, lose, I already took off the lock mechanism on it, so I'm just going to put that aside. You push the tab and you pull it out. And then you can set this harness on the side here. And as well as, let me see, is this entire piece, this all one piece together? Okay, I think we can unclip that from the bottom, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Next, we have another connector on the side here. I don't know if you can, yeah, that one over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the tab and disconnect it. I'm gonna put the connector on the side as well. Next, we have the connector, we have the connector over here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, it's right there. That's the one right there. Also has a lock on it, so I'm just gonna push that lock out and uh, get it out of the way. So I'm gonna do that. The lock might fall off. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Good thing I have a catch can in the bottom. <laughs> and I have already removed all the covers in the bottom as well, by the way, for stuff like this. Now this can be a little bit of a pain, so I'm just gonna push the tab from the top and then wobble it out. Here we go. We got the uh, connector out. I'm gonna go. Ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that on that side over there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these connectors as well. Uh, that one has a, a tab in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm just gonna push that tab. It's basically this tab right here. You push it in and you slide it out. So I went ahead and did that. So I'm just gonna keep that on the side. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this here. It has like a couple bushings. So I'm gonna try uh, using a uh, clip remover to see if I can push the bushing out. Hmm. Slowly, slowly, take your time. There we go. The access can be a little bit of a pain considering that it's a 7 Series G12. <laughs> Obviously the engine bay is cramped up. Okay, I got this side out. Now I'm gonna do the second side. I'll show you what we're gonna do next. 
All right, so as you can see, I removed this uh, piece over here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the hose. It has a tab on the top and a tab on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and push. All right, now we can release this uh, hose from here, from these tabs. As you can see, it has like a couple tabs. And I'm gonna see if I can, uh, yeah, I might remove the other side as well. So on this side over here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well and just move this entire thing far away from me. So let me show you. So same idea on this side, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and push on those two tabs. Mm -hmm. Slowly, slowly. The access is a little bit of a pain. There we go. But now I can go ahead and, uh, actually I can just go ahead and remove this, put it on. I'm just gonna put it behind the camera, there we go. As you can see, it's turning from there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but right there right there it's turning so because that clamp you know it's the swivel clamp kind of so i went ahead and removed that and now we're back over here now what i'm going to do next uh, is we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, coolant line uh, we have uh, this is the one i'm talking about now make sure you have a catch can in the bottom because it is going to be a uh, coolant show in just a few seconds all right I release the tab and I'm gonna go ahead and pull, push it down a little bit. Okay, I'm ready for the coolant. Okay, this is, uh, this is away, everything is away. I'm just making sure in case my hand slips, it's not gonna hit like another one of those uh, tiny hoses. I'm gonna see if I can push it a little bit. There we go, got it. All right. This one is out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and let it leak all the coolant it has in there and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, now that we removed this hose over here, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that clamp back in place. It leaked a little bit of coolant in the bottom. Like I said, I, I do have a uh, drain pan in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hose on the side as well. And same thing as that clamp. And I'm gonna go ahead and be very gentle. I don't know if you guys can see it, there we go. Uh, it might be a good idea to use a uh, clip remover just kind of pry it slowly 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 there we go it's gonna leak some coolant as well and i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can move this hose over here so that way it's out of my way and we're gonna let that uh, leak for a little bit next i'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this uh, clamp over here so we got this one I want to get rid of as well. Well, not get rid of, but remove it. This hose as well has a small uh, clamp. Just push it down. Slowly, slowly. Okay, it's not coming off. I'm going to use my clip remover, see if I can pry it out gently. This hose over here can break really fast, so be very careful. I think it's popping back up. The secret is to wobble it while pulling on it. It can be a little bit of a pain, and sometimes it will not actually work the way you want it to. Let's see. I think it's out, it's just, uh, yeah, I just pushed back. Of these so as you can see it is coming out slowly slowly put in my clip remover and pry them out slowly there we go now that we have this one out i'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there let it uh, bleed all the coolant that's in it the next step i'm gonna go ahead and try and uh, remove that bracket all right let's see how this thing works i'm guessing there is a clip there we go yeah, I'm just, I just pushed this up basically like this tab over here and I'm sliding it out with my hands. Here we go. Now that's almost out of the way. We almost got our, got our uh, charge air cooler out. All right, uh, now that we removed this and those lines are still draining coolant, I'm gonna go and remove this clamp over here so I can release the hose. 
you can either do that or you can release the entire thing there we go now that that's open actually you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave this and i'm gonna remove the entire clamp with the hose there we go just release it uh, because we need it to be out of the way and uh, then now we have the clamp out we can access the bolt that has the charge that holds the charge air cooler is right there that's one of the bolts all right now we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the uh, screw it's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the charge air cooler be very careful because the bracket for it looks like it's plastic but i doubt it's a 7 series i think they would go that cheap but again the n63 engine and its various uh production years they did go so cheap on some parts or like you know bad quality if you're if you work on 7 series a lot you should know you probably already know about the uh, coolant uh, common leak from the turbo coolers anyhow uh, we got that screw loosened so now it's like a little bit you know as you can see it's a little bit wobbly and uh, the next step would be as you can see this is attached to the turbo cooler this bracket right here is attached to the turbo cooler and we have the cooler attached to the throttle body in the bottom let's see if i can show you all right so in the bottom all the way here i don't know if you can see my pick but we have let me remove that on the side of the way this is the connector that we removed earlier let's see if i can access it uh -huh. it's coming up oh, come on it fell off Try to get it out of the way so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, I'm just gonna leave it there. Now we have the uh, clamp on the throttle body right here. That clamp, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pull it out in the outer direction or like in the direction of the radiator. There we go. Now it's out. So now the hose in the bottom that's connected from the charge uh, from the intercooler to the throttle body is loose. I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, I went ahead and pulled this up a little bit. So now it's loose from the throttle body. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the uh, clamp up top over here. Uh, so that way I can remove the intercooler uh, completely out of the way. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. It's the same concept. We have that clamp over there. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen it from this side. Ah, actually I gotta pull it towards me. Let me see if I can set the camera so I can show you better. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. Probably better to use my clip remover. There we go. Now it's completely out. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get that clamp out of the way. But I've been a good idea to remove the engine cover prior to this. <laughs> So here we go, one more drink cover is out. Now for this hose over here, that's the clamp for it. I'm gonna put it on the side. And then that's our hose. All right, now let's see if we can pull this thing outward, just be careful. Okay, this is everything detached from the bottom. Let me see if I can show you. There we go. That's a better angle for you guys. Okay, this is away. I know the uh, space is very, very tight and you gotta be careful when pulling anything out of these N63 engines. Anything at all. You always gotta be careful. There we go. And we're almost out. It's almost out. Let's see if everything is holding it. Okay. All right. The only thing we have right now is the coolant line on this side over here. And uh, I can see the throttle body right there. So let me see if I can set this aside and we can finish up. All right. So I want to go ahead and remove the intercooler. So I'm going to go ahead. There is only one, uh, one uh, line that's holding it right now or like one hose. And this is it's this coolant line over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the clamp using my pick. It's kind of hard doing this with one hand while holding the cooler, but uh, I don't think we could have removed it earlier prior to getting the cooler out of the way. 
Okay, plan B. I'm gonna go ahead and push the clamp out. Ah. Let's see if I can hold it with my other hand. There we go. And then I'm gonna try and pull on it. There we go, guys. Now to remove this, I'm just you're not gonna be able to see it, but I'm just gonna hold it basically and wobble it out. Uh -huh. I'm gonna use my There we go, perfect. Now we should be able to remove the intercooler completely out, just like that. So as you saw, we had with the coolant line on the side, we had the coolant line on the side. This is a clamp that hooks up to the throttle body in the bottom. Now it is leaking coolant, so I don't know if you can see it, but our throttle body is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cover our throttle body to make sure nothing, no coolant or anything gets in there, okay? If you have a bag, I would recommend using a bag and then a towel over it or something. All right. So as you can see, I covered our, thr our throttle body over there. Let me show you. That's the throttle body covered with a plastic bag. That's our thermostat right there. That's our thermostat. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to remove as many hoses as possible, like as many coolant lines as possible. So that way uh, our job would be much easier. The access would be easier and everything. Now the thing is with BMW, they made these, uh, as you can see, these all these hoses they, ma they made over here. They are sealed. I mean, we can cut them and change the seal, but I would not, I, would, I wouldn't like messing with the original uh, seals. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one. This one right here. Same, same idea, there is a tab. And then you wobble it out, just be careful. I'm gonna see if I can use my uh, tip remover. There we go. That one is out, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way as well. I'm gonna try not to bend it as much as possible, because bending these can be a problem if they crack or break. All right, now this hose can be moved on the side, over here, as well as these hoses. I can try to push them down. Yeah, let's go ahead and push them down. Let that coolant flow. Let that coolant flow. There we go. All right. I think now we have plenty of plenty of uh, space to work on our thermostat, which is the one right there, where the big hose is going. That's the connector for it. So let's start with the connector. All right. The connector should have a tab on it. I mean, I would be surprised if it doesn't. Actually, I don't think it does. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna push this tab, that tab over there. I'm gonna pull it out. Oh, that was easy. Oh my God, I was expecting, <laughs> I was expecting it to be a little bit harder than this. <laughs> Anywho, I'm gonna put that connector on the side over here. And then I'm gonna grab our new part and I'm gonna show you what the new thermostat looks like and where we're gonna find the screws that holds it. All right, we got our new part in from the dealer. That's the part number for it, right there. 11538685978. BMW. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get it out and see what our thermostat is gonna look like. Okay. And honestly, you guys, with with the seven series or with any G, honestly, the G series, uh, I would always go for original. And if you couldn't find the original or it was like like really expensive, try to find a trusted brand from FCP Euro or ECS or Turner More Sports even. I mean, it's all owned by ECS now. <laughs> Anywho, long story short, this is our thermostat. That's the connector I just opened up on top. And if you remember on the engine, it was, well, if this is your engine bay, it was sitting like that. That's, that's how it was sitting. So we have a screw over here. I'm guessing that's gonna be easily accessible. Another one over the side that's gonna be easily accessible. This one though, I cannot guarantee anything. So let's get to it. All right, so our special socket is going to be a reverse torque. Let me see if this can zoom in. Reverse torque, eight millimeter. I think there's too much light. <laughs> reverse torque, eight millimeter. It's a reverse star, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the furthest one down, which is that one right there. Be very careful, don't rush. And I apologize, that's my light dying out. Don't worry though, I have another one on my head. All right, that's the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and take out. Take your time. 
Okay. And it's probably gonna fall. If it does fall, I already have uh, everything open at the bottom. So actually, I think we can get it. Uh, there you go. Perfect. That's our uh, that's our uh, bolt for the thermostat. I'm gonna go put this on the side. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now, honestly, the first two, the one at the top, those are accessibly e uh, e uh, easily accessible, if I would say. Well, it's not. They're not really really on the top. There is one on the top, which is the one that we just moved, and there is another one on the side and the bottom here. Like I showed you on the thermostat itself, you just have to kind of imagine what it would be and uh, kind of open it. So I'm opening the second one right now. And as you can see, the coolant is starting to flow. If you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and remove this one all the way out and I'll show you what, what we're going to do next. All right, all of you are probably wondering why have I not removed the hose that goes on the thermostat? That's a very good question. I just asked myself because I completely forgot about removing that. <laughs> Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and move it right now. I only have uh, two screws that are open, so you, you will see. All right, now I went ahead and got the uh, bolt up, up, up on the back again. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the actual hose. Now I'm more confident about pulling on this hose a little bit harder. There we go. And it's gonna, <laughs> let me push that drain pan underneath it a little bit more. All right. I think it's in a good spot now. It's gonna leak a lot because this is going to the thermostat, so I can hear all that bubble, <laughs> that bubbling inside it. Anyhow, I'm gonna put it down. And it would be a good idea to give this customer a good engine wash after we're done because there is a lot, a lot of coolant that got spilled. All right, anyhow, uh, now that we got that uh, hose out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt again. The one I just inserted back. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot believe I forgot the hose. I was so focused on making sure that everything is out of the way and like, you know, without having to, uh, well, not without having, but safely and securely out of the way, I would say. Because like I said, the 7 Series engine space is cramped up. And uh, these tiny hoses that you see over here, they are very easy to break. Very easy. And not just on this model BMW. I'm talking even E90s and F10s, like anytime they use this kind of plastic here with the, at the end, which is like heated at the end over here, that plastic is very, very, very easily broken. Anywho, so we got the first bolt out, we got the second one. Let's see if we can uh, locate the last one. Last one is gonna be on the bottom, like I showed you earlier on the uh, a new thermostat. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get, see if I can touch it with my finger. Ah, I think I found it. Yes, I did. I'm going to go grab my uh, quarter inch ratchet and see if I can get it in there. All right. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and there we go. All right. I think it's loose enough for me to be able to move it just with my hand. So let me see if I can remove the ratchet from here. There we go. Yes. Perfect. And the coolant is gonna start flowing left and right. So we're gonna make sure we have a drain pan under the car. I'm gonna keep holding it a little bit. It's gonna leak a lot. And I'm hoping I can uh, keep my garage clean while doing this job. All right, I think that bolt is completely out now. Let's go ahead and get it, yep. And the thermostat is probably gonna fall in a second. <laughs> put this on side. There we go. All right. And our thermostat is officially, uh, come on now. Pretty sure we got all three screws. Is it attached to a, oh, there isn't. I didn't actually remove it, I thought I did. Okay. The, Last screw is still in there. Let me see if I can grab my ratchet again. There we go. I thought it was all the way out, but it's not. So let me go ahead and see if I can. Okay. It's almost out. Right there. All right, now that we have the thermostat out, I'm gonna go ahead and just dry up a little bit uh, over here. 
We got a new gasket, by the way. The thermostat obviously comes with a built-in sensor and a new gasket. So I'm just gonna dry it up a little bit. So that way when we put our new uh, thermostat, it seals uh, perfectly. All right, like I was saying, now that it's uh, completely dried up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my uh, new thermostat. As you see, it does have a new gasket on it all around. So let me go ahead and see if I can get it in there. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my first bolt and try to get it in there. Our space is a little bit tight, as you see. I'm not gonna tie it like, you know, with a ratchet. I'm just gonna tie it with my hand to kind of get it in there and make sure like, you know, the rest of the bolts are aligned. Okay. All right, let me see if I can hold this with one hand and spin the bolt with the other hand. I'm using my extension and the socket to kind of, you know, uh, get in there. Like I said, I'm not gonna tie it all the way until I have all three uh, bolts setting properly okay that's the first one i'm gonna go ahead and get the second one as well now i'm gonna to start with the one on the right side well the one on my right so the one on the side here let's see if i can get it in mm -hmm. ah, i gotta put it back on the socket i can kind of see it like i can kind of see where the bolt goes from the side here there we go just gotta play it by ear and be careful. Uh -huh. I'm gonna hold my thermostat. And I'm gonna screw, screw this with my hand like I was saying. There we go. It should be easy, like it shouldn't take like so much force out of you. Like barely, like you know, barely putting any force. Make sure the bolts are going in as smoothly as possible. You do not wanna cross thread this. So be careful. I'm gonna do the job once, you don't wanna do it twice. All right, the second bolt is in. Now for the third bolt, I'm thinking about fusing my longer uh, extension, but I'm gonna try with a short extension first. And these are wobble head, by the way, like they wobble, so that way it makes your job a little bit easier. But I'm gonna lock it for now and see if I can get it in without having to do, uh, without having to wobble it. So let me find the spot first, okay? It's right there. I can't really see it, to be honest with you. I can just uh, kind of feel it with my finger. Let me see. No, did not go in. Let me try again, see if I can feel it with my finger. It's right there, so like straight ahead from here. Okay. Let me see if I can get my hand. Probably be easier with my left hand. Let me see if I can put the bolt with my hand without using the extension. That way I can pinpoint it more easily. I think, yeah, I think this is easier this way. Yep, there we go. Now the bolt is in. Let me try and screw it in just a little bit with my hand. And then I'm gonna grab my wrench or like my extension and see if I can get it in there properly. Yeah, I'm gonna grab my longer extension. I'm keeping you guys with me throughout this process so that way you know that I'm not rushing and so you shouldn't rush either. Okay, it's in there, but it seems like it's kinda, I wanna say uh, it's not like, completely straight, so I'm gonna loosen the rest of the bolts here and go back to the last one at the bottom. There we go. There we go, that's much easier. That's why I say do not tie all of them. Uh, just put them all the way, not all the way, I would say like 90% in. Keep it, uh, keep room for the wobble a little bit around the housing. And then start with the hardest bolt to access. Start tying that up slowly and then move on to the next one. Tie it up a little bit more. Move on to the next one. And it's right there. Tie it up a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and get my ratchet and tie this in and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. 
All right, we got our therm thermostat uh, installed back in properly. Uh, now, to be honest with you, those are not like super tight. So if you when you remove it, you'll see it's just a little bit tight. So go ahead and uh, tighten it up almost the same way, if I would say the least. Uh, now, before we install this, let's make sure our connector is clean. Perfect, there is no sign of damage or water damage or any anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and install it. It just clicked in my hand i don't find, i don't know if you guys heard that or not but once it clicks that means it's good all right now the next step is i'm gonna go ahead and clean up around the throttle body because uh, like i said there was a lot of coolant spill here and there and we do not want any coolant to get in the throttle body so let me go ahead and remove this as you can see our throttle body is squeaky clean right there so we don't even have to clean it up i was planning on cleaning it up but the car only has a uh, well the car has low mileage i'll just say that Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, intercooler and I'll show you what we're going to do. Alright, uh, before we put the intercooler back in, obviously we have to put our hose back in on the thermostat. And as you can see, I have the clamp pushed in. Let me see if I can shed some more lights on there. I have the clamp pushed in, which is a good tell to know when it's installed. When you push it, it will click. So let me just make sure I get in position. And I'll try to push that thing in. <clears throat> there we go. I don't know if you saw it raise up a little bit and then clip back in. That means our uh, hose now is securely installed. Next, I have the uh, throttle body, uh, I mean the uh, intercooler right here. And the first hose was the uh, one on over here. So if I'm not mistaken, this was installed like this in the bottom. Yep. All right, I went ahead and adjusted the hoses the way they were earlier, like the way they were uh, when we uh, saw them, as you saw earlier in the previous clips. I tried to move them out of the way, so I got one on top of the other and whatnot. Anywho, uh, before I install the uh, intercooler from the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead, which uh, by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Actually, this is bigger. This is a bigger clamp and more sturdy, so it's probably a good idea to keep it open. So let me go and get that open. Uh -huh. As you saw earlier, I just pulled on it from here. That's how I took it out earlier. Anywho, we have that connector there. Make sure you don't have any harnesses that would get buried under the intercooler. And I'm gonna start with, uh, let me see if I can come from this side so I can show you. I'm gonna start with my hose over here. I have the clamp pushed in. So that way it will be a good tell when it clips. Mm -hmm. oh my god it's a little bit there we go now it's clipped back in all right let's see if we can uh, get the thermost uh, the intercooler to align with the throttle body perfect it's in there and this is going to go behind here and we're going to make sure that our hose stop all right that was the sound of this uh, uh, bushing uh, coming out so, well, not coming out, it just fell off. So that bushing goes there. That's where it went earlier. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's where it goes to hold the 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna keep this bushing here for now. And I have my, I'm gonna go ahead and install my uh, hose up top. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, that's probably a better angle. This just needs to be pushed in. And then we have our clamp. So I took out, took out earlier. Make sure it's installed in the same direction. Uh -huh. Let's see, here we go. Now we can push it in. There we go. Perfect, as you can see, it's secure. It's pushed into the sides and it's not coming out now. All right, let me get the camera back on this angle here to show you. Perfect, so we got the hose on the side. Uh, we got the uh, throttle body. Let's make sure I get that connector that goes on the bottom of the intercooler out of the way before I push the clamp back in. And I can go ahead and push this in. I can go ahead and put this in now. Honestly, it's safe to say that we are almost done. So let me go ahead and get this in. Oh my God, <laughs> it came off the <laughs> throttle body. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, it would be better, a wiser idea to get that 10 millimeter off. 10 millimeter installed first on the intercooler. So let me get the harness out first. This is the harness for that connector on the bottom of the intercooler. That one right there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the one. 
Okay, now before I install this, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and install that 10 millimeter. And I have the washer for it, which is the washer that fell off earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and try to slap that on there. I'm gonna start by tying it with my hands, make sure it's aligned. I'm not gonna exert a lot of force. You have to be careful. I think it's safe to say it's in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my 10 millimeter and an extension, and I'm gonna keep on tying it. Let's see, right there. And I'm watching the uh, end of it, like from behind the bushing, kind of screw in there. So perfect, it's completely in there now. I'm gonna grab my ratchet. And all right, it's in there now. Perfect. We have our uh, throttle body over there on the intercooler installed perfectly. I wish I can I could show you guys, but the space is like almost tight in the bottom over there. But sitting on the throttle body, so I just push that clamp back in place. And uh, I don't know if you heard it click right now or not, but it was uh, a perfect installation. Now, our throttle body is actually secure. Let me go ahead and get this one installed here. I'm just gonna push those pushing back in. There we go. Just push that back in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this. There we go. I don't know if you heard the click, but that's what I was talking about earlier. Now we can get start getting these hoses back in. Same thing, I clicked, so it's good. We can go ahead and install this one back in as well. Actually, before I do this one, let me do the connector on the bottom. I think that's the uh, boost pressure sensor or the pressure sensor in the intercooler. So I'm just gonna go ahead and align that. And I clicked. We can push that lock back on there. Yep. I think that's the lock that fell earlier, which I have over here. So I'll go ahead and uh, reinstall that, and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and install this. That one, you just push it in, or clamp in properly. There was no other lines. We already installed the one on this side here. This one, I'm gonna close that lock. I'm gonna push it back in, and it clicked. And then the last one, well, I don't think it's the last one. We still have, well, for coolant, this is the lock, gonna be the last one. Just push that back in. And it's good. All right, so let's recuperate. Thermostat, all three bolts are tight. We installed the hose, the clamp is on there. We put our uh, intercooler back in. We put the clamp from the top, the clamp from the bottom, and uh, we put all the hoses back in place. The one on the side here, we only had one. We had one on the side as well. And then there is this uh, T-shape uh, connector that connects from that side to the side of the radiator over here. And uh, now let's see, we have a few other connectors. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, install. Let's see here. All right, this is the first one. Actually, let's retrace our steps. So let's do the same thing. This is the, yeah, this was the first one, that, the second one we did, and this was the first one. So retracing our steps. Let's see. Oh, I think I got them backward. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Uh, this was actually the one that we, uh, let's make sure. This is the right direction. Ah, this is the right direction. There we go. I'm gonna push it in, make sure it clicks, and make sure it reaches that notch over there. And then we're gonna bring our uh, lock for this. This is the lock that fell earlier. Well, it didn't fall, I just took it off. All right, this is the lock earlier that I opened up. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back in there. There we go, now it's locked in place. And then we're gonna slide this back on the bracket. I think it was from the side, yep. There we go, now our connector is uh, secure. Let's see, I believe this was actually on the other side. I wanna put it back the same way it was. I think this harness was actually attached over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that again. Mm -hmm. Slide it out. And I'm gonna take out the connector. This is how I took it out earlier, by the way. Kinda pushed on that tab from the front. And I pulled on the connector. Just gotta be careful. All 
there we go. So this was, we said, this was installed here. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> okay, then we have uh, this. Let's make sure it's all the way to the notch. Push that lock in and we slide this one back in place. All right, and then we have uh, the hose clamp that was on this here. Let me go ahead and uh, pop that open. That's how it opens up. I'm gonna go ahead and close it on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide it. Try to slide it back in place. There we go. All right. All right, the only one left now is this, uh, I think it's for the, uh, it's a PCV, some sort of PC. Yeah, it's for the PCV, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and push it back in on the side. Okay, that clicked. And then this one is supposed to go here. And it's gonna be supposed to go here as well. And then on this side, it goes right there. Uh, right, just like that. Okay, we got, uh, now we have everything done except the radiator fan. So let me go ahead and get that uh, in and I'm, sure, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. All right, we got our uh, radiator fan. As you can see over here, now to install this back properly, you gotta make sure you keep an eye on all these hoses that are left and right. So just be careful and take your time. Do not trust the process. And uh, let's see if I can get some lights on here for you guys to see. Okay. First hose is gonna be this one here. Okay. Just be careful and don't rush it. Put it on the side, put it on the other side. Put it on the side. We do not wanna push any of the hoses or break them, honestly. Of course, I'm pretty sure you don't wanna do that either. So let me check on this side. Okay, so far so good. Okay, push those hoses a little bit. Let me see, I, I used a uh, step from over earlier to push those hoses out of the way. Just be careful. Don't push them with the uh, pointy part, push them with the flat part. Same thing on the side. There we go. A little bit on the side now. We are almost there. I'm sure taking it out was easier. For everybody, not just me. <laughs> now the last one, there is the hose on the bottom. That one does have to be put in place. So I would grab a uh, pry bar and uh, try to kind of align it. When you remove this, uh, you kind of see it. You know what I'm talking about. It's attached on the driver's side of the radiator. I think I pull. There we go. I'm just gonna push it a little bit further. So that sits in place. There we go. And we go. That almost and again. Okay, let's make sure now on this side there is nothing in the way. Nothing in the way on the side. Nothing in the way on the side. Here we have that uh, thermostat hose hitting the fan, so I'll make sure. And I know you see me like hitting it, I'm not actually hitting it, I'm more like tapping it a little bit to give it that small boost. Here we have a hose on the side here, like I said, you gotta be really careful with these hoses because they tend to break, even though it's BMW, and most of them are good quality. Those plastic hoses, those thin plastic hoses are on, like, you know, what's, uh, are the worrisome. The rest of the rubber hoses are actually uh, bendable and flexible. Okay, I think I gotta use my pry bar. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But I'm trying to push that. Push from there. Okay. Let me see if I can push it from this side. There we go. And get out on top of the thin blade. Almost. It's a slow process. It's a slow process, but... All right, let's see if I can push it out like completely out. There we go. Don't worry about that sound. That's just the... Uh, that's just the... Uh, Door, doors on the 
fan itself. There we go. All right. Now I can go ahead and decide I have the hose that's going from the thermostat. And again, I'm keeping you guys with me. I'm not trying to fast forward through this video. I'm keeping you with me so that way you see the process and you get a clear idea of like how these kind of jobs are done. Uh, I don't want to drop like a five minute video on how to remove a thermostat on a seven series because it really isn't a five minute job. Uh, so far, I believe I'm on my second or third hour, I believe, of this job. And here we go. Just like that. Our fan shroud is in. What's left? First, we have the connector over here. Next, we have two T25, uh, I believe they were. Let me grab my gun. And I'm pretty sure it's sat properly in the bottom. But I'll show you in a second what that would look like. I'm just trying to wrap it up from the top. Okay, those two are installed. Now the fan is in good uh, position. Let's make sure everything is out of the way. Everything is good. All the holes are out of the way. We don't have anything leaking. We don't have anything. Let me see, is that a clamp? I think this clamp is supposed to be on the fan shroud for a hose. Go ahead and there we go. I don't know if you can see it or not, but let me get the clamp in and I'll show you what I was talking about. There we go, right there. That clamp over there, let me see if I can show you. That clamp over there, that's a hose. That clamp over there was on the fan shroud, so I went ahead and installed that as well to make sure everything is sitting properly. OEM, that's what we're all about. We don't want to do those cheap jobs. We gotta make sure we put everything properly, especially for an expensive car. Customer trusted us enough to bring a uh, expensive car over here, so we gotta make sure to take care of it. Anywho, uh, let me get the rest of the parts and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, so as you can see, our fan shroud, this is what I was talking about earlier, about the fan setting properly. Those uh, tabs over there, they sit on the... I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. We'll wash the engine bay once we know the entire job and make sure everything is good. But I just want to clean this up because it kept on leaking. Well, not leaking, but more like dripping on the car itself. Crankshaft pulley, the belt, whatever your hand can reach, make sure you clean it up. We don't want to leave a mess in this uh, expensive, very nice BMW. Okay. This. Mm. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting the covers. You know, so the first cover uh, that I took off earlier, I didn't have to take it off to be honest, but I kind of took it off just to make sure I get a visibility if I need it to come from the bottom. But this is the first cover, I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you've seen my other video on the fan shroud, on how to like the radiator removal and replacement, it's the same exact uh, cover. I've, I've covered this in my other video. So I'm just gonna slap this back on there. Make sure these are aligned. The stabs there, there, and there. And then you can push them in. There we go. We don't have any screws from the bottom. Now we can go and put this cover first back on. All right, we went ahead and put everything back together. As you can see, we put all the covers back, the radiator fan, everything. And uh, we filled up the car with the uh, coolant, both the uh, reservoir over there and to the reservoir on the uh, other side as well. That one is electric uh, bleeding. You can uh, simply just turn on the ignition, put the fan at the low speed, temperature at the highest, press and hold the gas pedal for about 10 seconds, and the electric uh, coolant pump will kick on on that. That is normal bleeding. Anyway, uh, after we did that, the temperature on the instrument cluster now is reading properly. It's not showing a uh, skyrocket, very hot right from the start, and uh, everything is uh, working properly. And with that, our video is complete. Make sure you like and follow for more. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.